Welcome back to the channel. Let's get after it. The Bible says the earth is flat. You're going to believe man or God. I recently did a satirical parody video of actual quotes from flat earthers. This was one of those quotes. Let me debunk it for you. All right, go ahead and debunk it. First Chronicles and Psalms, it says that the foundations of the earth are firmly secure, cannot be moved. Well, this one's kind of not really secure, and this one floats around. Flat earthers don't really tell you what's under here, so I wouldn't say either one of those are firmly secure. If you're going to quote scripture, you might as well read the entire Bible. And if you actually read the scripture, you'd know that he laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Something that has foundation that can't be removed isn't floating. And actually, we do tell you what's under there. It's in the same Bible that you've already quoted. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Hmm. Guess you didn't do any research on that. But that's alright, I'll give you another chance. Let's see what you have to say. Job, it says that the earth suspends over nothing. Huh. This one kind of suspends over nothing. And once again, you misquoted scripture. And hang it, the earth, upon nothing. He didn't have to hang it on anything. Because he set the world upon the pillars of the earth. Go on. Revelation, it talks about the four corners of the earth. Huh. Hmm. Neither one of them have four corners. Well, of course the circle of the earth does not have corners. But if you check the biblical usage of that word, the original Hebrew word is kanap, meaning corner, the biblical usage is the edge, the border, the skirt, or the extremity. And you even said in your own video that God uses metaphors. So I would say that was poetic figurative language, which there's a lot of that through the Bible. Other verses talk about the rising of the sun or the setting of the sun. Hmm, on a flat earth, they say that the sun just goes around and around like this, so it never rises. Just like he said, the sun and the moon go in a circular motion around the flat earth. Well, how are they rising and setting? Well, the Bible tells us that too. He set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. You go around a racetrack in a circuit, right? The Bible said the sun comes out as a strong man to run a race, and that he set a circuit for the sun. And yes, the sun does appear to rise and set in the sky. It's because the closer it gets to you, higher up it's going to look in the sky, and the further it gets from you, the lower it's going to look in the sky. This is called Law of Perspective, and if you know anything about science with your ball model, then you would know what Law of Perspective is. If you were to look at some power lines, you can see the one that's next to you, that's closest to you, looks higher up in the sky, and the further they get away from you, they are looking smaller and lower, and then they disappear. This is Law of Perspective. Same thing's happening with the sun. Same thing's happening when an airplane flies over your head and then gets too far away from you. It disappears and gets lower and lower and lower. It's not actually rising and setting, just getting further away from you. Are you going to say that the telephone poles that appear that way are also rising and setting? People think that flat earthers are just the dumbest people ever and that they don't do any research. We didn't just wake up one day and say, oh, the earth's flat. No studied and studied and studied and studied and research and research and research and then you see the truth so before you come on here and attack people that way at least read the scripture in context god bless you guys if you want to actually become educated with this stuff go ahead and get the true earth book right now it's in my profile for download it comes with access to our private discord community tag this brother and i'll see you guys in the next one i'm giving this round to the blonde kid the uh the older gentleman there whether he's right or wrong, his argument didn't hold up. Of course, he's not able to go back retroactively and argue with the blonde kid because the blonde kid is the one who's making the video. But if they're both trying to use scripture to prove their point, the blonde kid certainly got a, a leg up in that argument. But again, not saying I believe in the flat earth theory, just saying that between those two arguing, the blonde kid wins. In the early days of the world, God sent 200 angels to earth. Their purpose was to observe and guard humanity. They became known as the Watchers. 
Typically, angels are considered spiritual beings, but in the Book of Enoch, the Watchers are physical entities. They're described as large humanoids, some with wings, and they radiate so much light that it's difficult to look directly at them. The Watchers taught humans how to cultivate crops and create pottery. They taught humans about medicine and curing illness. The Watchers taught humans about astronomy and astrology. In ancient Sumerian texts, which Enoch is probably based on, 300 beings are sent to Earth from palaces in the sky. These beings are called the Observers. They, too, help humanity take a great leap forward. We see this story in ancient cultures all over the world. Advanced beings come down from the sky and bring humanity the gift of civilization. In the Book of Enoch, the Watchers helped humanity advance quickly and civilization spread. But the Watchers became vain and proud. They were instructed by God to withhold certain knowledge from man. The Watchers ignored these instructions. The Watchers taught men how to create new metals for weapons. They taught men how to harness fire and wage war. They taught women witchcraft and alchemy. The Watchers revealed the secrets of the heavens and changed the course of human development. They violated the Pride Directive. They did. This transfer of knowledge was a double-edged sword. While it propelled humanity forward, it also brought about corruption, a deviation from God's order. The corruption didn't just affect men, it affected the Watchers as well. The Watchers were spending more and more time with human women. Uh-oh, this isn't gonna end well. The Watchers became lustful. Told ya. Then they started taking human women as wives for themselves. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men, and beget us children. Enoch chapter 6, verse 1. This part of the Enoch story has been interpreted as the human-alien hybridization program developed by the Anunnaki in Sumerian texts. In those stories, human women weren't being taken as wives, they were just being taken, abducted and used as incubators for a new species. This union of celestial and mortal bloodlines gave birth to a race of giants, the Nephilim. Another ancient text found in the Dead Sea Scrolls was called the Book of Giants. This book, along with the Book of Enoch, described the Nephilim as creatures of immense size and strength and immense cruelty. The Nephilim brought even more corruption and violence to the world. Torn between divinity and humanity without a home in either, they go insane. Soon they turn on humans and torture anyone they can find. The Nephilim needed to consume so much food that eventually they began feeding on human flesh. Humans are helpless to stop these advances. Many are enslaved by the powerful Nephilim. Many more are killed. Then a few humans decide to follow the example set by the Watchers. They think if angels can torture and kill and enslave and sleep with whoever they want, why can't we? Then the world becomes filled with people like this. Soon God can't tell who's a Nephilim and who isn't. Enoch delivers the message to the Watchers, to the Nephilim, and to all mankind. Repent for your sin, or suffer the wrath of God. Enoch's warning is ignored. He's brought back to heaven, where he begs God to help save the earth. So God makes a decision. The earth has become so corrupt and so foul that it needs to be reset. He will cause an event so cataclysmic that everything and everyone will be killed. Humans, angels, Nephilim, all of it, gone. But one man and his family will be spared. The only man who can't be corrupted. The only man who could be trusted to restart civilization. Enoch's great-grandson, Noah. But here's the thing. There's a lot more to Noah than we've been told. In the book of Enoch, we get the full story. I'm definitely going to have to look that up. It's fascinating to me to find out all the stuff you hear from the Sumerian text about the Nephilim and the Anunnaki and all this stuff is, is referenced in other areas, in other texts from different civilizations. It really makes you start thinking. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back to join me tomorrow. Well, my career in law enforcement, I actually joined the Brotherhood of Freemasons. You know, a lot of cops are involved with that. Uh, it's a thing that I'm not saying you must do, but 95% of them do. It's a cult that's not going to be messing with. My lieutenant spoke for me. You know, I petitioned. It all went pretty good. The, the first phase is the inner apprentice phase. The second is fellow craft. That's, oh, yeah, that's uh, the second degree, fellow crap. Now, what did I get myself into, but... Did you ever get that far? Oh, yeah, I became a master mason. Ranks of 30th to 33, which is three. Uh, that's when they divulge the, the, the actual truth to you. To get that high, it takes years. In order for you to be a Shriner, you gotta be a mason. For you be a Knights Templar, you gotta be a mason. And you, the, the more you go up in that pyramid, and the highest you could go is a rough child. Right. They're the highest of the highest. Really? Yeah, children of Satan. Moloch is the actual owl that they worship out in California, all these big shots. And that's where they make the presidents, too. Really? They make presidents there. To do with them? Oh, yeah. You have to be a Freemason to be there. All the presidents were Freemasons. Okay. A small portion weren't, but they were Jesuits. This is the same thing. Okay. Yeah, even the Pope. 
Yeah, it's everything is controlled by the white and black pope. Yeah. So black and white, which is uh, white and black tiles, is where oh, we have our oh, temple. That's where you get that. Yeah, okay. the yin yang. You know, the, the right. good versus evil. You got to have one of the balance. They know which president they're going to make. They make them. They, all this po political stuff. Right. That's just BS. Right. Uh, the all seeing eye is the Lucifer. Right. Underneath them is the Rothschilds. Underneath them is the Council of Thirteen. Underneath them, you got the Council of Thirty Three. Underneath them, you got the Council of Foreign Relations. And underneath them, you got, you know, like six big companies. They own all the real estate and they own all like media. The Masons are the foot soldiers of the Illuminati. You understand right. the pyramid, right? Yes, yes. It's shaped like a, like a triangle, right. right? So we're at the very bottom. Rothschilds, they run all that from that house. They don't, they don't leave that house. Why is that? I mean, is there Because that's where the devil dwells. Gotcha. The, dwell, the, the devil could only be in one place. God is everywhere. Yeah. You understand? See, if, if you start exposing them, they'll go after you, they'll go after your family, they'll try to kill you because the government is part of it. A lot of them are politicians, heavily involved in witchcraft. Mm. And they have to do certain rituals and certain thing, and with those orders come money comes with it. Satanic at the core. This whole country is not based upon Christianity. It's satanic mm -hmm. from head to toe. Don't ever think that the president is not a satanic worshiper either. Don't ever think. I'm gonna put it out there. Because, I mean, come on, their God is money, Lucifer. And I was involved in that. Yeah, you swore never to divulge any information, but to always protect and help your fellow brother. That's wow. it. Anybody out there considering to becoming a, a Freemason, don't do it. Didn't really need that warning to stay away from the Freemasons, but I will heed it. <laughs> This sounds like a lot of hocus pocus, uh, all the witchcraft talk and the, the rituals and stuff like that, but it's not. We see it's happening. We see it's happening in our, uh, we see it happening with our celebrities. You know, everyone knows about all the problems in Washington, how they all love white powder on their noses. If you get what I'm saying, there's a lot of crazy stuff that goes on. None of this would surprise me. If, if they come out with video footage proving all this to be true tomorrow, it wouldn't shock me at all. Check this out everyone, this is some excerpts from Admiral Baird's diary from when he travelled to Antarctica in 1947. Have a listen. Dick, February 19th, 1947. 0600 hours, all preparations are complete for flight north and we are airborne with full fuel tanks at 0610 hours. 0620 hours, fuel mixture on starboard engine seems too rich. Adjustment weight and Pratt and Whitney's running smoothly. 0730 hours. Radio check with base camp. All is well and radio reception is normal. 0740 hours. Note slight oil leak on starboard engine. Oil pressure indicator seems normal, however. 0800 hours. Slight turbulence noted from easterly direction at altitude of 2321 feet. Correction to 1700 feet. No further turbulence, but tailwind increases. Slight adjustment in throttle controls. Aircraft performing very well now. 0815 hours. Radio check with base camp. Situation normal. 0910 hours. Vast ice and snow below. Note coloration of yellowish nature and disperse in a linear pattern. Altering course for a better examination of this color pattern below. Note reddish or purple color also. Circle this area two full turns and return to assigned compass heading. Position check made again to base camp and relay information concerning coloration of the ice and snow below. 0910 hours. Both magnetic and gyro compasses beginning to gyrate and wobble. We are unable to hold our heading by instrumentation. Take bearing with the sun compass. Yet all seems well. The controls are seemingly slow to respond and have sluggish quality but there is no indication of icing. Beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below. Something is definitely wrong and abnormal here. I cannot see the sun anymore. We make another left turn and we spot what seems to be large animal of some kind below. It appears to be an elephant. No, it looks more like a mammoth. This is incredible. Yet there it is. Decrease altitude to 1,000 feet and take binoculars to better examine the animal. It is confirmed. It is definitely a mammoth 
like animal. Report this to base camp. 10.30 hours. Encountering more rolling green hills now. The external temperature indicator reads 74 degrees Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Fahrenheit? Wow. I believe this. I think that's fascinating. I believe Admiral Byrd, I think for someone who's so highly decorated and such so highly respected for them to go on national tv and either tell the biggest lie or the biggest truth that's ever been shared on national tv i believe he was really speaking the truth i think he was going off of what he actually saw which i believe comes from a parallel universe if you are not familiar with the mandela effect empire strikes back you need to google it or you're not going to understand what's on this tape but y'all i'm about to put this tape in and hit play and you're going to see absolute incontrovertible evidence that parallel universes and the mandela effect is real here goes y'all I don't buy that one. It's too easy to fake. And Darth Vader doesn't even have a mouth visible whenever he's speaking. So <laughs> anyone could just edit that audio over it. Everybody and their mom does a good Darth Vader impersonation. Rumor has it that there was once an eighth continent bigger than Australia. It is said that it was flooded over by a worldwide cataclysm that happened thousands of years ago, around the time of a big reset. However, it was not completely flooded, as there are still remnants of this land that people are still living on today. Now listen to this. Both ancient Mayans and Indians lived on opposite ends of the world and no form of communications, yet they still both had records of this mysterious land mass referred to as Lemuria, located in the Pacific Ocean. This large land mass was said to have had a population of over 60 million people. The existence of the Lemurian continent would pose a better explanation to how the Polynesian islands in the Pacific Ocean became populated. Ruins such as the Nam Madal could possibly be evidence that proves this landmass did once exist. Nam Madal is a complex of isolated man-made islands in the Pacific Ocean that were built with stone blocks that weighed up to 50 tons and were set on top of a coral reef and is the only ancient city in the world to have done so. Mu or Lemuria could be found in the Pacific Ocean and supposedly reached Hawaii in the north and stretched southeast as far as Easter Island and touched Micronesia in the west. Now I'm not great at geography, but if this is true, that is a huge E continent. What do y'all think? Y'all think that continent's real? Y'all think that really existed? 60 million people? Those numbers seem a bit off to me. It was a large enough continent, but did we really have that that large of a population back then? So far back that we wouldn't even have records of a continent that existed. If ships sail over the curve, why can you pull them back with high-powered lenses? Why can you see the Chicago skyline over 60 miles away across Lake Michigan when it should be over a thousand feet below the horizon? Why on clear days with low humidity does the sun appear to not set, but rather retreat beyond the point of the eye's perspective? If the moon reflects the warm light of the sun, why is moonlight proven to lower temperatures and not raise them? If the Earth orbits the Sun and the Sun orbits around the galaxy and all the galaxies are moving away from each other, why have we seen the same constellations in the sky for thousands of years and why do we have perfect star trails at nighttime? Why does NASA claim to use ground-based observations in order to stitch together their images of the globe? It also says sex in the clouds right there, by the way. Why does the Bible describe our world as a still flat Earth set on pillars under a dome? Why do almost 70 times it talks about the Sun, Moon, and stars as moving, but not once referring to the Earth as moving? In fact, it says the Earth is fixed and immovable. Why is the United Nations flag the map of the flat Earth? What do your senses tell you? Spinning ball or still flat Earth? You're being lied to and controlled. Why? Research flat Earth. I don't know what it is about the flat Earth thing. I just cannot fall off the fence on one side or the other. And I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> trying to make my mind up on it i'm just uh i guess i'm just the type of person that doesn't like to be fooled so uh, that's probably why i'm so analytical and so judgmental over a lot of these videos it's just my personality but i'm still on the fence about it but some of this stuff is so convincing but on that note i would like to start focusing on more varied topics 
So if you guys wouldn't mind dropping a, a line down in the comments, let me know of some theories or conspiracies that you guys are familiar with that I can dig into and that we can all dig into here on the channel. That would be awesome. Uh, I don't want this channel to become a recycle of the same three or four theories over and over, and I fear that that's that it's going in that direction. I need some more theories to to dig into. When it comes to giants, we talk a lot about how they were. Which is a somebody that what is taller than eight feet or what? Yeah. It could be eight yeah. feet. Sometimes they found skeletons up to eighteen feet, nineteen a human. Feet. You can go true. to um, like these newspaper archives. You type in giant skeletons found. You will find thousands and thousands of news articles where farmers dig up these things. They were here. They were here in America. And then you have these stories of Lovelock Cave in Nevada. The Indians fought them and trapped them in there and smoked them out. You could see these skeletons on display in a museum there till like 10 years ago and then they took them I there was a, like that these are the historical accounts there's all this archaeological evidence that they were they were pushed to remote parts of the world these fishermen tell a story of seeing one remote in louisiana we're fishing and and they're going through they're miles in they're camping one night start a fire and they see these giant heads look through the bushes at them and then solomon islands there's stories of giants still living in the mountains of the solomon Islands. so the they're still around. Of all these things, right? Thousands of articles and all these experiences. If just one is true, we throw out all the rest of them. Say they're not. Yeah. One is true. It causes you to adjust your paradigm. I hate not having the references to actually be able to look up what this guy's talking about. Like the stories is more specifically what I'm referring to. I wish I could get a more detailed depiction of that story. Like you know, they saw these giant heads while they were out camping. Then what happened? As far as the museums and stuff, one thing I find interesting is if you look at Guinness Book of World Records and search for tallest person alive, they're only like eight foot something. Of course, we're talking about people that are alive today, but it usually will give you depictions of like, it will give you a description of the, of the average height of a man, average height of a woman, and then tell you what the tallest man is, and then a depiction of him. And, you know, I re read no reference in there of there being pre-existing people that were taller than that of course i've seen the newspaper articles and stuff like everybody else so but i want to know where they took all these skeletons and stuff from these museums the current model of physics can't explain our world two scientists for example uh, vernon nepp and ed close came up with a theory by the name of the triadic dimensional vertical paradigm theory and in this theory they they realized the current model of physics can't explain our world. It can't explain our world because when we start to look at things at the quantum level, there are anomalies that the, the model, the current model can't explain. When you look at things at the microscopic level, at the particle level, they start to break the laws of physics. So how can the things that make up the physical world break the laws of physics? It's an illusion. And so they came up with this theory and realized that we live in nine dimensions. They think that we live in nine dimensions, but those nine dimensions are inside of an infinite dimension. What they realize that the, is that the modern model of physics can't explain quantum physics. They can't explain how things work at the particle level. A different model needs to be con constructed to explain this. And what they realized is that there was at least, I think like 48 anomalies that the current model cannot explain. And one of those, one of those, the only one that I could really wrap my head around was the Kabibo angle. Don't know what the Kabibo angle is because he didn't care to explain it. They decided to cut the video off right there. First of all, on this one, science is probably working with a bunch of flawed information. And that's probably why they're having issues. Because there's so much dishonesty and lies in the scientific community. There's so much gatekeeping and infighting. I think the scientific community is working on flawed information a lot of times because of that. And secondly, I think there are some things that we're just not ever going to find out. There's some things we're probably not meant to know. And if you're getting down to looking at the building blocks of particles and you can't figure out how they function based on your current understanding of how things work maybe your current understanding of how things work is wrong and just look at it this thing is massive and it's over four thousand years old oh but we do have a pyramid bigger than that and nobody's talking about it the great pyramid of giza is peanuts against the buried pyramid of the sun in bosnia and you will not believe what they found there in 2005 archaeologist dr samiros monogets realized hey this hill in the small bosnian city of Visoko is oddly shaped like a pyramid and shaped like a pyramid was an understatement this hill has virtually every characteristic of a real pyramid and we continue to ignore it to start it has four triangular sides that's it pyramid confirmed we're done joking but it's got even great slopes and corners that connect perfectly under the foliage along with an apex at the very top the exact shape of a pyramid but oh it don't end there johnny boy it's also 
perfectly aligned to the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, much like Giza. In fact, this one is even more aligned to true north than Giza, being only one three hundredths of a degree off from perfect north, whereas Giza is two sixtieths of a degree off. They even took EMF, electromagnetic frequency readers, to the top and saw readings of 60 times more of what is normally expected on Earth. Another phenomenon that tends to occur at the pyramids, and the reason why is so mind-baffling that we'll have to save that for a future video. This hill was aptly named the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the first pyramid of its kind in Europe, taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza, and even bigger than the biggest pyramid of the world, Cholula, in Mexico, with four other smaller hills around it that are also suspected to be pyramids, or some other structures, as is usually the case at these ancient sites. Sure, it might just look like a hill covered in trees, but have a look at what the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, Mexico looked like before it was excavated and after. Same with Machu Picchu and after and Chichen Itza and after. Any ancient site that isn't in a desert is typically covered with overgrowth and the Bosnian pyramid is looking a lot like that before stage. And just have a look at these drone shots and tell me these formations look natural to you. So Dr. Osmanagic began the excavations and now get this, radiocarbon analysis taken from the rocks hidden beneath the vegetation revealed that this pyramid would be over 35,000 years old. The oldest pyramid in the world by a long shot, over 30,000 years older than Giza. During a time in which traditional history claims only only tribes and cavemen incapable of erecting such monuments roamed the earth far before any civilizations began to form or so we think for reference here's a timeline of all major ancient civilizations and structures built around the world and here is where the Bosnian pyramid would stand in that timeline excavations also revealed huge blocks of seven tons each stacked with geopolymer binding which is an ancient type of cement and perfect placement along with perfectly landscaped terraces and other obvious architectural design but oh no these are all natural note that this was all uncovered up to a meter underground, as would be expected of a pyramid over 35,000 years old. And of course, the archaeological gatekeepers of the world insisted this is just coincidental. With some even going as far as saying Dr. Osmanagic purposely placed these carved stones here to deceive the public. And famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, who oversees most of the Egyptian pyramid investigations, even petitioning the Bosnian government to stop these excavations. Within hours of this international discovery, the story is swept under the rug and labeled a hoax. Well, over 50 archaeologists around the world remained optimistic and actually joined Osmanagic's work in Bosnia, with virtually every single one of them who actually saw it in person confirming that nature could not have formed these hills. Further studies revealing an entire underground tunnel system in the area, the longest subterranean complex of any pyramid in the world. Inside these tunnels, large stone blocks were found that clearly seemed to be artificially created and placed. Other artifacts like this giant round stone that no one can explain and a whole bunch of other smaller ancient trinkets, statues, and even what appears to be a map carved into stone were all found around the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids, all dismissed as irrelevant or flat out ignored by mainstream archaeology. Even the peak of the Sun Pyramid forms a perfect triangle with the peaks of the nearby hills, dubbed the Pyramids of the Moon and the Dragon. Another crazy coincidence, right? After much pushback, the government actually did grant Osmanagic the right to continue excavations. But with no official funding, the entire project depends on donations and volunteer work. These excavations are still going on, but after tourism to Bosnia slowed down in the last couple of years, progress on these pyramids have as well. As as with anything, you could probably rationalize a completely valid reason for each of these discoveries, and maybe it really is somehow just a hill, so you think we're tweaking on this one, or are we onto something? Who's ready to get digging? And there's another prime example. These archaeologists don't want to look stupid. They've been saying that the earth is so old and people have been here for X amount of years. Evidence comes out shedding light on it that we're actually been here a lot longer than that and that we've got these massive structures that we've built as evidence and everyone wants to shut this guy down and this is why we'll never know exactly what that site is do we all still feel like the civil war was what they told us it was is that a sore topic do people get offended about the civil war the term civil war always makes me think of civil engineering and I know at some point they were trying to tear down and burn as many buildings as they could. Could the Civil War battles have been fought as a front to destroy Tartaria? <laughs> okay, that sounds so far-fetched. Th this guy reminds me of the way that my mind would work if I was drinking and sitting around on my own just thinking with no external input. <laughs> just putting things together that don't go together. 
that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the clips that I put together. I really enjoyed a lot of these. And again, if you guys have any suggestions for future clips or anything like that, leave me a comment down below so that I can go do some research. Uh, several of you already have, and I appreciate that. I would like to officially apologize for the ending of yesterday's video with all the cat pictures. <laughs> My camera quit, and I couldn't tell that it wasn't filming anymore. So all I had was the audio for that last little bit. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.